How do you improve the air fill distribution of a single plane manifold on your LS? Would you believe the answer is to add boost? In this video, I took a modified 6 liter LS and installed an Elbrock single plane Super Victor EFI intake. Along the way, we found out a lot of cool stuff, including how to make a powerful 6 liter NA combination, how to make an even more powerful 6 liter supercharged combination. But most importantly, we found out the difference in air fuel ratio, the distribution between NA and supercharged. Our test motor was the very famous LY6 Big Bang motor. You know, the same one we made 1,543 horsepower with at 29 pounds of boost. The only thing that stock bottom end motor had was extra ring gap. For this test, we installed a centrifugal blower cam from Brian Tooley Racing. We also topped it with a set of Trick Flow 225 heads and that Edelbrock Super Victor EFI intake. Now naturally we had large enough injectors and a Holly HP management system to dial it all in. Topping the Edelbrock intake was an elbow from Holly designed to accept a 102 millimeter throttle body. But stick around to the end to the conclusion, we've got a bonus test where we compare the elbow to a four hole throttle body. That's right, it's a test everyone waited for, but it doesn't happen till the end. So now let's take a look at the power output of our NA motor. You get to hear it run. Then we'll show you the results. Then the air fuel distribution. We'll follow that up with another run with the blower, then the results, then the air fuel, then the bonus test. Okay guys, as we can see, we've got the power curve here for our modified 6 liter LY6. We had a stock LY6 short block with extra ring gap. This was the very famous Big Bang motor. And we added the Trick Flow 225 heads and the centrifugal blower cam from Brian Tooley Racing. Now, in all honesty, that blower cam was probably a little mild for the 6 liter with only 227 degrees of intake duration to start things out with. And normally we would run something that's going to be more 231, 232, 233-ish, but that's fine. For the centrifugal blower application, once we put the blower on, this thing worked well. But equipped with the trick flow heads and the blower cam and the single plane Super Victor intake, our 6 liter produced 568 horsepower at 6,900 RPM. And as you can see, we ran this thing out to 7,500 just to see, kind of see what was going to happen with the curve. And since we knew that the centrifugal blower is just going to keep increasing power with RPM, we wanted to rev this thing out a little bit to find out what was going to happen because, you know, the single plane manifold definitely is going to be a high RPM piece, especially that Super Victor. So we made 568 horsepower at 6,900 RPM and 485 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM. We had a nice torque curve again, even though it's a blower cam and not ideal for this and the single plane manifold obviously is not ideal for torque production. Nevertheless, it managed to exceed 450 foot pounds from 4,600 RPM to 6,600 RPM. So it was actually doing fairly well. So we've got a nice baseline here. Uh, we started out, we've got a nice curve. Now let's take a look at the individual air fuel ratios that we got here because we monitored uh, all eight cylinders with the naturally aspirated one as we did once we installed the supercharger. So let's take a look at the air fuel curves on the naturally aspirated one first, then we'll get to the power output of the blower motor. Okay guys, as we can see here, we've got a bunch of different air fuel ratios and obviously the first thing you'll notice is they're, they vary greatly here, and which is something we've come to expect from a single plane manifold. Now it's important to note that we ran this fuel injected with individual injectors in each port we also ran it as a sequential system, although it doesn't really matter for this particular test whether it's sequential or batch fire because it would produce the same results. Basically what we're seeing here is the same amount of fuel is being supplied to each one of the cylinders at every RPM range. So we have, we don't, we're not doing individual cylinder control here. All we're doing is running the same amount of fuel to all the cylinders to each of the cylinders at the same RPM. So here's what happens when we supply the fuel in that manner. 
we see we've got uh, a dramatic change in the air fuel ratio of individual cylinders and we've got a lot going on here so what I want to do is let's take let's narrow this down a little bit what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of these and we're going to pick out the, the ones that have the biggest difference here So we're going to select runners 6 and 7, go back to our curves. So you can see they started out about the same over here in this area when we rolled into the throttle. So you know what I'm going to do since this is not, let's do this as an RPM based thing here. Okay, yeah, just you can see the RPM. It's, it doesn't really change anything on the curve, but now we see RPM at the bottom. You see, when we first started out at 3,500, we loaded this thing. They were basically the same air fuel, which was nice, but then they diverged dramatically. And again, these two cylinders are being supplied the same amount of fuel through the whole RPM range, but yet they have a wildly different air fuel curve, which tells us that the, those individual cylinders are either not getting uh, as much air or getting too much air, and the power outputs of those individual cylinders are obviously different. So this is a nice curve up here on cylinder number six, but it gets pretty rich here in cylinder seven. Now, obviously the answer is to go ahead and do individual cylinder tuning, make these all the same and everything works out just fine. I don't think we'd see any problem with power here, but we would see a difference in safety. So that's the change in air fuel on the naturally aspirated version. Now let's take a look at the power output once we added the supercharger. Now let's take a look at the power output after we added the Procharger F1A94 centrifugal supercharger. And this is our NA power output of our modified six liter. Now let's take a look at what happens when we add some boost. Big change in power. After we installed the Procharger, the power output jumped to 1,049 horsepower at 7,200, and you can see it was still climbing. We really did this to demonstrate the difference in air fuel distribution between supercharged and NA applications on this single plane manifold. So we could have made a lot more power. I mean, the supercharger was, we configured it with pulleys that produced a peak of just under 15 pounds, 14.9 PSI at 7,200 RPM started out at 4.7 pounds down here at 4,500 and produced 1,049 horsepower and 769 foot-pounds of torque. And the fact that we reached the torque peak at 7,000 RPM shows that this thing uh, has a lot left and was still climbing. So you can see this is really good power and this is kind of what we come to expect when we add a supercharger. So even though on our R6 liter, we had a fairly mild centrifugal supercharger cam from Brian Tooley Racing, on our six liter, this thing still made a ton of power. So it just goes to show you, you start with a good NA power, you add boost and good things happen. I mean, you know, it seems odd that people don't even get excited about making a thousand horsepower, but a thousand horsepower is a lot of power. And this thing did it without any problem at all at 15 pounds of boost, things are working well. So now let's take a look and we're gonna take a look at the air fuel curves and see if there was a change after we installed the supercharger. Okay guys, here is the air fuel ratio of the eight cylinders on our supercharged application. And there are two things I want you to notice. First of all, if you take a look at cylinders six and seven, just like with the NA version, those are the two biggest difference between the cylinders. We've got the richest point on cylinder seven is 10.9 and then the leanest point on cylinder six is 12.9. So we have a difference of two air fuel ratio points, which is quite a bit on a supercharged application. Now you might be able to get away with that on an NA stuff, but you certainly wouldn't want the thing to be 
that lean on a supercharged application, at least not for very long. Now, the other thing I want you to take a look at is take a look at all the rest of the cylinders. On the supercharged application, all of those were bunched up fairly tightly, meaning they all had roughly the same air fuel curve. There was some disparity there, and obviously like with the NA motor, we could go in and adjust those and tune them individually and make them all perfect. But what I like is the fact that other than the six and seven, everything else was kind of the same. So what I wanna do is let's compare the supercharged version to the NA version, but I need to get rid of some of these, otherwise it gets really busy. So if we get rid of, let's just keep six and seven for right now, and we can compare those to kind of get an idea. So that's, that's cylinder six and seven for on the supercharged version. So now let's open our NA version. Okay, I know it's a little hard to see. We're gonna change this so that the color is the test. Okay, so now we have our supercharged version is blue and the NA version is red. We see that there's a difference of about two air fuel points on the supercharged version. Actually there it's less than one. But the biggest difference between the widest points, 10.9 and 12.9, but on the NA version, it varied from 11.4 all the way up to 14.0. So we had an even bigger difference NA than we did supercharged. So it actually helped them when, when we added boost to this. And again, remember, we did no individual cylinder tuning. All we did, we supplied the same amount of fuel to all the cylinders on both of these applications. But when we added the supercharger, it seemed to even the distribution out which is really nice. It's definitely what you want because you'd be more concerned on a supercharged application than you would on an NA application. So there you go. The, key, the answer to improving the distribution on your single plate manifold is definitely to add boost. Now let's take a look at our conclusion and our extra bonus test. Okay guys, what did we learn? Well, in my opinion, in this test, we learned something really cool. And that's we can improve the air fuel distribution of a single plane EFI intake by adding boost. I mean, that's super cool. A lot of guys use these single plane intakes and blow through them with the turbo or supercharger, whatever. But they all use them and it works well. And adding boost makes it even better. So now here's a test everyone was waiting for. The four hole throttle body versus the elbow. Now I ran that test naturally aspirated. I know it had to be under boost, so make sure to comment. Tell me what I did wrong. But I ran the test naturally aspirated on a modified six liter over 500 horsepower. Now we compared that elbow, the Holly elbow, set up to accept the 102 millimeter throttle body against the four hole 4150 thousand CFM throttle body. And guess what? There was no difference. I mean, none. No change in horsepower, no change in torque, no change in the middle of the curve. The curves were an exact overlay. Nothing changed on them, and not surprising. The 102 millimeter throttle body and the elbow, or that 1000 CFM 4150 throttle body, both of them had enough to supply the power needs of the motor, and nothing changed with distribution either. Now, that might change if I add boost, but that's another test for another day. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure to comment. Let me know about this test. Let me know about other tests. Thanks for watching.